Do you find it really daunting to sit down and prepare a resume? Do you find yourself wishing if it could be easier? I know how you feel. So do you know how a well-crafted resume paired with a simple email could unlock a world of opportunities? Picture this. 300 cold emails sent out, one positive response and the ultimate experience in the heart of London. Yeah, this is my little story, but what my brief story won't tell you is the significant change I made to my resume, leading to the acceptance of the observership I had aimed for. Today, I'm sharing tips to help you avoid making the most common mistakes and offering a step-by-step -step guide on crafting a resume that opens doors. Hello everyone, it's great to see you here. For those who haven't met me yet, I'm Kader, a final year medical student currently studying in Turkey. Let's start with my golden tips. So first things first, I think you need to be aware of the difference between a CV and a resume. So a resume is a concise document highlighting work experience and skills typically tailored for specific job applications. On the other hand, a CV is a comprehensive overview of one's career. So you decide which one you need to prepare. Let's first go over some golden tips that will set the foundation for a resume that you can confidently share. These tips are crucial in creating a document not only showcases your accomplishments but also makes a lasting impression on the people you're addressing, thereby strengthening your impact. So you need to sit down and jot down some stuff for these headlines personal information, education and awards, professional experience, extracurricular experience and research and publications. Give it a try. Even if you think you don't have experience for all these categories, I'll show you how mine looks like. Speaking of extracurricular experience, my one of the best, if not the best recommendation for students, even new graduates, it's to gain experience during school years or early years of your career. It can be internships, part-time gigs, volunteering. I mean, leaving the profit they'll add to your resume aside, they're gonna be a wonderful life experience. So moving on with my tips. On your resume, you need to organize each section chronologically, starting with your most recent experience and working backward would create a clear flaw. Speaking of which, your resume needs to be well organized and easy to follow, as a very complex and random looking resume might lose interest immediately, which leads me to tell you what are the things you should definitely avoid doing. Let's start with your contact info. Do not state your full address. I think it's no longer relevant. So instead, just add a city or a state, even just your LinkedIn profile will do. Stop using weak action words like I helped, I was responsible. Instead, use words like developed, assisted. Lastly, always but always tailor your resume for the specific role you're applying to. It may seem like an extra and unnecessary effort, but outcome will be more likely better. Moving we'll on with the chapter to a decent photo to include on your resume. For example, I used a picture of myself wearing my white coat and stethoscope in my previous resume. Here's a tip for you to achieve a similar look. Simply place your phone a bit away from you. Wear something nice, preferably something professional. Then take several shots, setting your timer to 10 seconds. So once you've got your shots, you can basically search for a photo enhancer website and find one that, that is free and use it. Another tip is to use this helpful app called Remini AI. You can use it to create professional looking pictures. Let's take a look at how it works. After downloading the app to your phone, you can subscribe for a free trial. And if you'd like, you can cancel it like I did. Select AI photos in the middle, then tap generate my photos. After choosing your gender, you can pick the curriculum. You have the option to select one of the model images or get the full pack to see how it goes. Finally, upload several selfies 
so that the AI is successful images. Where are the results of my images? I think I'm gonna go with this one. Moving on with chapter three. This is gonna be about my mistakes that I have made back in the day when I wasn't aware of the, the points of making a resume. You will be after watching this video. I'm going to show you my previous resume, which I am not 100% comfortable doing that, we'll do it anyway because I want this video to be beneficial for you. Take a look. I mean, at the first look, it doesn't look awful, but when we get into the details, there are some problems. I mean, just look at the summary. Of course, we use AI, we use ChatGPT, but not sounding very human writings could actually harm you instead of making a good impact. Let's go one by one. I liked that I knew I don't have to put my full address, so that's a good thing. On the relevant skills part, it's kind of like too much. I don't even want to read it, okay? Self-motivated. What is self-motivated anyway? Language is Turkish negative, English advanced C1. My problem here is just I don't think that looks really professional, so I would rather choose something like English, proficient, French, elementary, maybe, maybe basic, and um, education. So the headline is education history, but there's not much of a history here. It's just like fifth year faculty of medicine. I think year of graduation is pretty self-explanatory. On the experience part, assisted in rounds in general surgery department, I have literally just stood there. Volunteering part looks so dates here. Conferences here, which is also really complicated. So yeah, let's move on to chapter four, finding a CV template. In this chapter, we'll be using Canva. There you go. Then search for CV templates. All right, find the one that appeals to you and uh, try to choose a template that would be efficient. The information that you're going to put on, you kind of like have to pre-think actually, because if you have like five main sections that you're going to put on your resume, if you choose something like this, you know, it's just going to be a waste of time. So let's move on to planning. And there we have my notes here. So I prepared a note having all the info that I'm going to put on my resume, starting with contact info, summary or objective statement. I went for a summary. My relevant skills here, I might just use five of them, but I list it anyway, because it's important to tailor your resume based on where you're applying to. So list at least 10 of them. It was just here, education here, I just wrote my uni and my year of graduation. For the experience part, I wanted it to be more specific, so I chose saying clinical observerships. I included all the observerships that I've done so far, starting with the most recent one, London. Let me see. Volunteering and conferences here. And here's the research and publications, which is important. So I've included the Congress and the date, the topic of the research. Here's the extracurricular experience section, which I have discipline committee president for a uni dance club and I'm the founder of a student club. It's basically for med students and film club member here. That is it for the info I'm planning to put on my resume here. I want to share some ChatGPT prompts with you guys. I think it, it'll, they'll be really helpful for you. That is the prep we have here. Let's head to Emma. Okay, so let's see. By the way, avoid the ones with a Canva Pro icon in the right corner if you don't have a premium account like me. So that looks nice. Liked it. That is also nice. I really like the colors. I think it's really aesthetic. So I'm gonna go for this one. Okay, let's start customizing the template. Right, our name. Let's say meta power stated. I do you want my little summary to be up here? So going to my notes. That is better. By the way, I'll have the parts that I do little details because I don't want this video to be boring for you. So let's add a text box here. And then paste. There you have it. Adjust the size of it. Okay. The image um, uploads. I have it for my uploads here. There you go. 
Okay, looks good already. Going back to your name, make sure to use a professional font. I'll go for something else. You can use it too. Yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna delete this, delete this too. Instead, let's take it up here. Yeah, put your number, put your email and address. Let's move at the education. Put it up here because I have lots of things. I'll basically just copy and put it here and then delete this. I don't want any language info here, but I'll still put it out there because I'm gonna use it as something else. And just um, edit a couple of main things and I'll be back. So as you can see, I put some of the ink from my notes and continuing to work on the small details like bolding the same hat lines, using bullet points for easy scanning and trying to ensure a clean professional look throughout. So here, as you can see, I'm adjusting the size and getting them closer to each other because there is another section that I'm planning to put on the resume. I'm copying one of the sections because it's easier to create another section changing the headline copying and pasting it again then try to have a similar look for all the dates on the resume and changing the fonts to lotto again adding my relevant skills adding another text box for the relevant skills because the first text box was capital letters and I'm not going to use capital letters for the skills, so adding the skills, adding the languages part, adding another text box for the same reason, and doing little adjustments. So everyone, this is the final look. If we compare it with the previous one, I'm content with what I got here. The last touches I've made include adding certifications at the end of the left side and ensuring that everything is aligned with each section maintaining the same size. After making your final adjustments, remember to step back and review your resume as a whole. Keep in mind that this is just to give you an idea and may not be perfect, but I'm confident that having all the tips from this video, you can create an even better version. So that was it for my tips on crafting a resume. Have you been also procrastinating doing one? Just can't get yourself to sit at your desk and get that resume done. Let me tell you something, eat the frog. It is a productivity technique that gets its name from pithy quote by Mark Twain. If it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. So if you take that first step, I promise it'll be easier. See you soon.